worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. For you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, bending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. For you are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Oh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. That is who you are. Waker, that is who you are. 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 Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Good evening, church, and welcome to this community prayer service for rain and creation. My name is Missy Doctor. I am now on staff at Morris Reformed Church, and on behalf of MRC, I want to let you know what a privilege it is to be able to partner together with all of you and offer this opportunity for us to come together as a community and pray for something that we are in such desperate need of. I can't think of any better place to start than in the Word of God. So I invite you to tune your ears and your hearts and listen to these words from the prophet Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. 
It shall not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. And in the year of drought, it is not anxious. And it does not cease to bear fruit. Church, we have the opportunity tonight to come together and lift our voices as a community to the one who is the source of not just physical water, but of living water. And so as you think about interceding on your own behalf and on the behalf of the community and the world, I invite you to enter into a prayer posture. There will be a time later in the service for you to go to an open mic time and just to offer a small phrase, a word, a prayer uh, for rain for the community and for the world. So think about that opportunity. And with that, I invite you to stand and sing. Would you pray with me, please? Father, as parents, we celebrate when our kids come home to our house. And you do the same when we come home to your house. As parents, we often hear, Mom, can you make me something to eat? Dad, could you grab me a pop? Mom, can you wash my uniform? Dad, can you fill my car with gas? It's less often that we hear thanks. Sadly, it's often the same for you when your children speak, more often asking than thanking. So right now, Lord, we don't want to ask for anything. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for your patience with us. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for your kindness and your love. And most of all, thank you for your faithfulness to us. You are our provider. You have been since the beginning of time. You've always taken care of your children. You provided for Adam and Eve in the garden. You provided for Noah and his family on the ark. You provided a child for Abraham and Sarah, even when they were old. You provided for Joseph when he was sold as a slave. You provided for the Israelites in the desert, giving them manna to eat and water from a rock, a cloud by day and a pillar by night to lead them. You provided another generation for Ruth. You provided a whale for Jonah. You provided a barn for Mary and Joseph to deliver their baby boy. And you have provided sight to the blind, walking legs to the lame, 
and healing to the sick, freedom to those held captive to addiction, hope to the hopeless, and a home for the lost. Yep, you've always provided for your children. And we are your children too. We have seen your provision and your faithfulness firsthand. We are forgetful and we're selfish children sometimes. You provided restoration to marriages, revival to families, and redemption from our sinfulness. You provide new beginnings and new journeys. Father, we could go on and on and on. We are beyond grateful for the numerous ways you have provided for us. And we just needed to remind ourselves of all those gifts and provisions that have come from you and just say thanks. So in the precious and mighty name of Jesus, thank you and amen. Let's sing together, be the blessed assurance. pray to God in any place and in any posture. Kneeling in prayer is a way for us to humble ourselves, our hearts, before God and to be especially earnest in what we ask. Moses and Daniel are examples from the Old Testament and Paul from the New Testament who knelt as they prayed. So tonight I invite you to join me in kneeling, to slide ahead in your pew and kneel right where you are if you desire to do that, and if you are physically able. In any case, let's come before God and acknowledge our need as we ask God to send rain 
to our specific area and community. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, you are the creator and sustainer of all that we know and so much more. We kneel before you tonight to humble ourselves before your greatness and power. Whether or not we are able to physically kneel, may that be the genuine posture of our hearts. In your word, you encourage us to come to you with confidence, not because of who we are, but because of what your son Jesus has done for us. You invite us to approach your throne to receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. Our time of need is now, and our specific need is for rain. Rain for our crops, livestock, wildlife, and water resources for all the ways we use water with our families. We need water to sustain and replenish us and your creation all around us. Forgive us for thinking of you at times, for being stingy or withholding your abundance of resources from us. Instead, you are a generous God who loves to give good gifts to us as your children, even more than what we as earthly parents do with our children. You are a God of cups that overflow a God who does more than we dare to ask. Maybe that's part of the problem for us. We don't dare to ask or have the faith to ask. Our faith is small, so our prayers are small. Forgive us for our small faith, and forgive us for taking the blessing of water for granted. We are a needy people, O oh God, but your resources are beyond measure, and your heart is for us as your children. You are our protector and provider. In Philippians 4, verse 19, it says, My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in Christ Jesus. That's your promise, God, and we know that we can depend on you to keep your promises. The truth of the well-known hymn says, All I have needed, your hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Because of this, we pray in anticipation of receiving from your hand this gift, both the amount and the timing of it. As we present our need to you, we are on our knees. And when you provide the rain that we trust you for, may we again be on our knees to thank you and praise you. We will use this opportunity to testify to others around us about your faithfulness compassion, and generosity. We pray this as your children, and in the name of Jesus, your Son, amen. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Those who are sharing in leadership tonight from First Reformed Church and Morris Reformed Church, Amanda and Dwayne and, and Kara. I've especially been uh, moved already to hear the, uh, the number of times we've already laid claim to the goodness of God on the basis of his word in scripture. And we're going to continue to do that for a couple of moments together right now. So friends, we have gathered in God's house this evening to call upon the name of a mighty Lord because this is a time of distress, a time of uncertainty, a time of drought. The land needs water. Our fields and watercourses are running dry. The created world around us, the plants and the animals and the people are not flourishing as they typically do. This past week, I saw this graphic online uh, generated by the Iowa Environmental MesoNet. This map displays where each region of the Midwest ranks in terms of its wettest Junes 
over 129 years of record keeping. As you can see on the inset to the right side, June 2021 represents for our area the 129th wettest, or simply put, the number one driest June in their books, as far back as they have records. And of course, you and I all know that June was not the beginning of this time of drought for us. Someone remarked to me that farmers have now stopped looking, watching the radars on their phones because the rain showers they're watching seem to have an allergic reaction to our area. They veer off and peter out and drift away. And the healing rains have not yet fallen on our land. Our community, and as you can see, our region needs moisture. And while we don't need to reach a point of desperation before calling on the name of the Lord in a special service like this, there is no one better to turn to when our situation is dire. For our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Tonight's service is anchored in our corporate acts of prayer, so we won't be having a long sermon time, but for a moment or two, I'd like to, for you to consider with me how people of faith can appreciate a theology of drought. A theology of drought, Pastor Tim? Yes, a theology of drought. In the biblical world, far more than in our own age, people connected the phenomena of weather to their understanding of God. Lightning and snow and windstorms and thunder, all of these phenomena were to our spiritual ancestors revelations about God. And the same was true of drought. In fact, the Old and New Testaments together mention about 100 references to rain being sent by God upon the earth. This evening, I'd just like to lead us into two ideas, really two verbs that speak about God's provision of rain in seasons of drought. Two scripture passages and two brief invitations from God's word. The first verb, the first word is examine. Examine. In times of drought, the Bible suggests, God is pressing his people to examine their hearts, their ethics, their conduct, and then to return in faith after doing so to him. Listen to these words from the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah 14. This is the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Judah mourns, her cities languish, they wail for the land, and a cry goes up from Jerusalem. The nobles send their servants for water, they go to the cisterns but find no water. They return with their jars unfilled, dismayed and despairing, they cover their heads. The ground is cracked because there is no rain in the land. The farmers are dismayed and cover their heads. Even the doe in the field deserts her newborn fawn because there is no grass. Wild donkeys stand on the barren heights and pant like jackals. Their eyes fail for lack of food. Though our sins testify against us, do something, Lord, for the sake of your name. For we have often rebelled, we've sinned against you, you who are the hope of Israel, its Savior, in times of distress. And just a few verses down, the Lord, in response, reveals the prayer which he wishes to hear from his people in times like this. We acknowledge our wickedness, Lord, and the guilt of our ancestors. We have indeed sinned against you. 
For the sake of your name, do not despise us. Do not dishonor your glorious throne. Remember your covenant with us and do not break it. Do any of the worthless idols of the nations bring rain? Do the skies themselves send down showers? No, it is you, Lord our God. Therefore, our hope is in you, for you are the one who does all this. Jeremiah's words here are the culmination, the fulfillment, really, of promises and prophecies that were revealed centuries earlier through Moses. Check out what Deuteronomy 26 says. The word of the Lord, if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in its season, and the ground will yield its crops and the trees their fruit. But if after all this you will not listen to me, I'll punish you for your sins seven times over. I'll break down your stubborn pride and make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. Friends, when we experience drought like this year's, when our sky is like iron and the ground cracked open, we realize anew that good weather cannot be taken for granted. The healing rains, the growing rains, are a blessing that, according to Scripture, is conditional upon the obedience of God's people. Now, most of us don't like to think about rain or other blessings from God this way. We don't like to believe that our morality can affect meteorology. But we're not taking the Bible seriously if we don't consider that. So today, we might be wise to tune into the words of Jeremiah and of Deuteronomy and to examine ourselves. Have we too been thoughtless or rebellious or wicked? What manner of guilt lives in our hearts and among our families and amid our nation? No, watching the radar might not help. But living in repentance surely can examine. And the other word for our consideration tonight is the word excavate. Yeah, excavate. Because we who do trust in the Lord must always make ready for the return of his blessings. For he is a good father who gives good gifts. In 2 Kings chapter 3, the rulers of Israel and Judah, Kings Jehoram and Jehoshaphat, had marched their troops into the wilderness to confront their enemies. But while they were in the desert of Edom, their soldiers and their animals experienced severe dehydration. And the Bible indicates that this caused great despair in their camps. With little hope left, the kings turned to the prophet Elisha, who replied with this word from the Lord. He said, dig this valley full of ditches. In other words, start excavating. Dig this valley full of ditches, because even though you shall feel no wind and see no rain, this valley shall be filled with water. And according to the Bible, this is exactly what happened. The Lord provided for the people and the animals without sending so much as a single storm cloud. 2 Kings never indicates exactly how it happens. It just declares that the next day, water begins rushing toward the people from Moab. There's no low-pressure systems, no broken levees, no cloudbursts. 
neither Elisha nor the narrator provide any explanation. But God provides. And that's precisely the point. God worked in an unexpected way to provide for his people. And because they had dug their ditches and prepared their cisterns and set out their five-gallon buckets, the Lord provided for them. Their faith in what was unseen made it possible for them to survive in the drought. Perhaps, friends, we need to do some excavating ourselves to maybe prepare for God to work differently among us than what we always anticipate He should. To watch and wait and get ready for God working to heal our land in ways that blow past anything our minds could imagine. Maybe we need to dig some ditches and get ready for the Lord. This past Sunday, I had a member of this congregation come up to me and tell me that the last time we did a prayer for rain service, he came to that meeting bringing his umbrella. Maybe he did tonight too, I'm not sure. But that's the kind of faith we must cling to. That's excavating, right? That's getting ready, being filled with belief. In the New Testament, James says that when we make our requests of the Lord, we have to believe and not doubt in the one that we call on. Because our God hears our cries of repentance and he delivers us even when no rain cloud can be seen on the horizon. So pray and pack your umbrella. And as we continue to do so now, as Missy mentioned earlier, we're going to enter into a time of silent prayer. And anyone who would like to, who wishes to lift up a sentence of prayer themselves, can approach the microphone that's right in the middle of our sanctuary and, and speak a sentence or two on behalf of the community gathered here. And after a couple of moments, a Dan DeVries from Morris will uh, finish out the prayer on our behalf. So let's now close our eyes and yield up our hearts to the one who provides. God, as you have provided in the past, when your people have called upon you, we ask now that you would incline your ear to us, that your heart might be attuned to our hearts, and that you would receive these fervent prayers of your people on behalf of the land, the community, and the people.
faithful God of springtime and harvest, we thank you that you are the Lord of all seasons. Today we give you thanks for all those who work the earth, the farmers and the gardeners, tilling, planting, nurturing, harvesting, and those caring for animals so others may eat. We thank you for those who plant the seed in faith and entrust it to your care. Thank you for the miracle of germination and growth, the miracle of seeds, soil, water, temperature and light combined to cause a plant to grow. It's something that only you can make happen. Forgive us for the times we take for granted when the rain was plentiful and the crops and produce were abundant, when there was no shortage of food in the grocery store. Especially in this place, we know that food doesn't magically appear in the stores. It's the result of hard work. And we thank you for the hard work of farmers. And ultimately, we know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. And as the farmers and caretakers of the land model for us, help us to be patient also. As James reminds us, the farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. We pray for protection for all those who farm. We pray for their health and strength to be sustained for the work you have given them to do. We pray for wisdom for the farmers who make decisions, sometimes on a daily basis, about what inputs to use, what expense will be worth the return in harvest. We pray for the marketing decisions that are made, that those producing the crops will have a good return for their labor. Gracious God, while you do not promise rain and perfect temperatures, you do promise that you will always be with us, that you will walk with us. Even when the fig tree does not blossom, and there's no fruit on the vines, and the produce of the olive fails, and the fields yield no food, yet we will rejoice in the Lord. We will exalt in the God of our salvation. And as the Apostle Paul asks, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And so, gracious God and loving Father, in all these ways, spoken and unspoken, we pray for the farmer and caretakers of your creation that you would sustain them in their labor, in their patience, and in their faith in the provision of your gracious hand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand together and sing the goodness of God.
Lord, we know that we are not the only area of this country and of this world that is struggling with the heat and dryness. Throughout this area and the entire western region of our country, people are looking for refreshing rains. Much of your creation cries out for your restorative touch. We know that western ranchers are struggling with reduced forages and curtailed water supplies. Recent news stories report an early beginning to the fire season out west due to the continued heat and dryness. We see reports of record low reservoirs, cities rationing water, wondering if they'll have enough palatable water to make it through the year. So we pray, Lord, that you would send rains to refresh and restore those areas as well. We know that you and your wisdom use times like these to remind us of your goodness and gracious, greatness, but also to teach us lessons that we may have often forgotten. Lord, we acknowledge that we have sinned and fallen into the mindset that with the current technologies available that we are no longer fully reliant on you and we only rely on you as needed. Forgive us, Lord, for placing our trust in ourselves and in our inventions instead of the Son of Man. May we rest completely in the promise and assurance of the psalmist who said, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. May we trust you as this process plays out. And we pray that even in this, that your will would be done. And while we wait for the heavens to open and to send the needed gentle rains, we ask that you would give us patience. We admit, Lord, that in our instantaneous mindset, when we do not receive what we ask for, we may find ourselves doubting and wondering if you really are at work. May we remember at these times that you know what we need, even before we ask for it. Your word says you hear all of our prayers, even before we lift them up to you. You provide generously and supply for us more than we could ever hope or imagine. So while we wait for you to move, would we remember your character? As the author of Lamentations wrote, but this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. So while we wait with anticipation for you to move and to send us the reins, give us patience, Lord, and we, may we remember that you are good, and through it all, May we find solace in the sufficiency and the goodness of your grace. In thy name we pray. Amen. Gathering together for prayer is uh, essential. But Jesus also tells us that when we pray, we should go into our closets and close our doors and pray to our Father who is unseen. So, 
we urge you to continue to pray uh, about this drought in your homes and with your families and, and other congregations of which uh, you may be a part as well. Following the parting blessing, we are going to conclude this time by praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer, but doing it in song. And uh, Amanda will lead us as we sing together the Lord's Prayer. Friends, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power which is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, now and forevermore.